Hey folks, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, I'm gonna to be talking about the process in which to import or transfer your dog to the UK, uh, specifically from the USA. So up until a few months ago, I happened to be living in Seattle, and uh, I was living there for almost two years. And during my time there, I purchased uh, a dog, Alba, who is a black Labrador. And you'll see her featured in my videos and on my channel. Um, and I, I like to go paddle boarding with her, etc. Um, but uh, I decided that uh, it was time for me to conclude and end my time in the US. And uh, obviously that then led to me having to bring back Alba to the UK. Um, so, Obviously this was very stressful for me, um, living on my own in the US and then having to go through the process of working out what do I do to, to bring this dog back with me. So I'm gonna take you through some real simple steps. Um, it isn't actually as complicated as it seems. Uh, certainly for me, I found the whole experience stressful and I'll share my, my story. But um, uh, let's get started. I'll, I'll, I'll take you through what, what was involved. So. First up, there's various different things that you're going to need. So um, the first thing you're going to need to do, obviously, is get up to date with your vet. You're going to need to, um, if you haven't got a vet, you're going to need to go get yourself a vet. Um, the dog is going to need to obviously be registered and checked in with that vet. Um, you're going to need to go and get your dog microchipped. Um, there are two specific um, ISO compliant chips that are supported uh, within the UK and that is ISO 11784 and 11785. These chips in essence are just uh, the standard across Europe um, and they basically have a 50, they, they, they carry a 15 digit number um, and it just basically conforms. You're gonna need, so you're gonna need to get microchipped. Uh, the next thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to give your dog a rabies vaccination. Um, now, if your dog is not microchipped and hasn't had a rabies vaccination, you are going to need to get that microchip before you have the rabies vaccination, um, just because they're gonna to need to have a record of the microchip being in there before. Um, so to do that, obviously you can do that same day if you need to, having the chip implanted as well as that rabies vaccination, or you can just get the microchip inserted earlier and, um, and have that rabies vaccination done. You're gonna to need to have um, the rabies uh, vaccination 21 days before your travel. So you need to be thinking about this ahead of time um, for when you're gonna do it. Um, there's a couple of other things. You're specifically for, for the UK, you're gonna to need to have your dog um, uh, wormed and that's specifically for uh, tapeworm. Uh, that needs to happen between one to five days before travel. Um, uh, so that's the time window that you've got to get that done. Um, the other side of this is um, you're going to need to go and get yourself a EU health certificate for the dog. Um, this is a little more complicated with the fact that now um, in the current time we, we've left uh, the European Union in the UK and uh, but they're still accepting the EU health certificate. In essence, uh, your vet is gonna be able to complete this. This is a form that you're able to get online from uh, the Department of Agriculture website. This will specifically come from APHIS, which um, is A-P-H-I-S, which is the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. What will need to happen is you'll take uh, this document and your vet may, um, be clued up about this. Um, I hadn't actually, with my vet that I chose, I, I was working with um, Banfield Pet um, uh, Clinic in Seattle, in Ballard, and they hadn't, uh, they weren't set up with this. They didn't have the forms to hand. Um, so you'll be able to print this form off or they will be able to complete this via a portal that they have access to. Um, if they complete this via the portal they have access to, this can go directly to APHIS um, and the payment can be done automatically. In my case, I had to print out this form. Um, I took it to my vet. They obviously had the microchip number. They were able to provide all the details about vaccination and confirm that the dog is healthy for, for transport. 
What we then uh, will you'll, you'll find is that you'll need to um, obviously get the confirmed copy of this. Now, this uh, European health certificate, or we'll just call it a health certificate for now, um, this will need to be embossed and stamped. So this is a series of pages, which is just the APHIS department approving that the dog is healthy and that a registered vet that's uh, within their systems has seen the dog and approved it for transport. Um, the, uh, you're going to need that document 10 days uh, prior to travel, so um, it can't be aged over that period of time. In my scenario, it was really complex because um, we had lockdown starting. Um, so I, I transferred Alba, my Labrador, six months ago back to the UK. Uh, so it's just around summertime. And uh, we'd just gone into lockdown. Um, my vet wasn't registered on their system to automatically send this document. Um, so I was very stressed. Um, and I then had to uh, go and drive this document to a APHIS office, um, which was shut. Uh, luckily, I was able to to get hold of somebody. They took the document. It's going to cost you thirty eight dollars uh, to uh, complete that certificate and, and get it back, and that that is in essence the the critical parts. Other things you're going to need are a flight crate. Um, so this will have to uh, conform to the flight. Uh, regulations. Um, depending on the airline that you choose, they're going to have documentation uh, as to what is an acceptable crate. Now, when you choose your crate, obviously it'll have to be the right size for the dog that you have. Um, obviously, it's not necessarily a dog, but whatever you're transporting back. Um, but it'll have to be appropriately sized. So when you go to check in, they will actually measure this and get clarification um, to make sure that this is the right size for your dog. So that's one step you do not want to mess up by getting an incorrectly sized crate. Um, so as for the, the next side of this, um, uh, you're gonna need to choose a carrier to, to send your animal with. Um, I, I specifically chose IAG Cargo. Uh, they own various different uh, airlines like British Airways, um, Iberia, etc. Um, I was obviously, I faced quite a few different problems here. I was in Seattle, I needed to send the dog back. Um, I tried looking at different ways or different carriers. I couldn't find a carrier at this time that was able to um, uh, fly out the back. You also have to bear in mind the temperature outside. If the temperature is too cold, they won't also fly your dog. If the temperature is too hot on the tarmac, they also won't fly your dog. Um, so you have to time this appropriately or expect that there could be a delay in the shipment of your dog. Um, I ended up, uh, obviously, as I said, this was during the, the pandemic, the initial kickoff where we're all in, in lockdown. In effect, they shut down all the airlines. So all the routes were unable to be supported. So I couldn't do um, a flight with Virgin, um, Virgin Cargo or any of the other providers. So I ended up choosing IAG Cargo. And I simply emailed the uh, company for an inquiry on their website, which I think was iagcargo.com, and found that most of the flights around me uh, or the airports were all canceled and they weren't doing cargo flights. Um, uh, which obviously in my scenario, it created this massive stress and it turned out that uh, the only place I could fly Alba from was either LAX or San Francisco SFO. So I made the decision that I would drive um, uh, a long way. So I drove all the way down the West Coast uh, from Seattle. So going from Washington down to Portland, uh, through Oregon, and then down to California to get Alba onto that flight. Um, and there were obviously we did that over, I think, a three day journey. Luckily, during the pandemic, hotels and motels were still open. So I was able to uh, to break up that journey into a more comfortable stay. We got to see some pretty cool stuff on the route. Um, and then we got to, uh, to check in. So what can you expect when, you, when you've when you got all your paperwork and you, you've obviously agreed the contract where you're sending your dog? Um, so you'll arrive at, in my case, San Francisco airport. You'll need to go to the cargo entrance um, and go into the cargo office. Uh, from there, they will uh, be aware of the process that they're receiving an animal. And once you have... Uh, filled out all the paperwork that's required. Um, you can then go to the loading bay, and at which point you can reverse your car up and you can uh, take your dog out. 
What they will do is they'll line up your dog next to the crate and check that the crate is of a valid size for the dog. And they'll, in my case, they took a picture, sent it away to their manager to confirm, and then approved it. And I said goodbye to Alba and along off she went. There are some other aspects of this, such as um, you need to travel uh, within a certain time period of the dog. Um, so in my case, I made sure I got a flight back five days prior um, or five days um, within five days of Alba traveling. The next uh, aspect of this is obviously what happens after you, you ship the dog. So I was obviously anxious. Uh, I've just driven, uh, in, a, in effect, it's a 13 or 14 hour drive um, direct. I broke it up over three days, but um, I wanted to make sure that I knew the dog had taken off before I left San Francisco. Uh, so I, uh, waited and was watching obviously the flight departure and eventually obviously knew that she was on her way. The next aspect of this is if you're shipping your dog into the UK, uh, chances are you may be shipping it to like a central hub. So I, I chose uh, the route from San Francisco to Heathrow Airport. And uh, at Heathrow, you'll have the Heathrow Animal Reception Center. Now, this is where they will uh, receive the animal and put it into a cage. If you have not completed all the paperwork as expected, your dog will go into quarantine. Uh, if you've completed it, you can literally pick up your dog um, within hours. So I luckily had my family available on the UK side to go and meet the dog and pick her up and bring her home. So uh, they arrived at the airport. There is gonna be a fee that you have to pay um, uh, when you arrive at the animal reception center. And uh, another aspect of this is, depending on how long you've owned the dog, you may have to pay um, import tax on the dog, given it's uh, seen as an asset. Um, I uh, was literally two days off uh, the certain time period. I think you have to own the dog for at least six months. Um, so I ended up having to pay uh, a nominal tax fee. Now. In this case, it's just a, a value on a piece of paper. You can just state that uh, the dog was X price and pay the tax on that. So if you were to say that your dog cost $100, nobody's gonna question that and you just pay X percentage tax on that. Um, you'll obviously then wait in the reception center when you've got somebody to go collect there and uh, you'll then be able to collect the dog and your crate and uh, be on the way. One thing you'll note as well is that you'll need to take a lead and collar with you. Um, when you're traveling with uh, the dog in the crate, they are not allowed to have a collar with them or a lead in the crate. This just because during the flight, something could happen and obviously the dog could get distressed or caught up in the collar. Um, and that is as simple as it needs to be really. Um, there will be uh, some extra forms that you can fill in or you have to fill in for your airline. This will be if there is a delay to the flight, they are able to give your dog food uh, and water. Um, your crate will also need to have a water bowl attached. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll throw up a picture of what I purchased here. Um, and that should suffice for what, everything you need. A um, couple of other things that uh, you'll need to do once your dog is in the UK. So if, if this is not a dog that was in the UK before and you've uh, bought it whilst you're abroad in the US, um, when it arrives to the UK, obviously its microchip number is not going to be referenced or recognized. Um, you're going to need to register that with one of the UK companies. It is a requirement um, uh, legally by the government that you register the dog. So you'll need to take care of that. So what is the, uh, the cost here involved? Um, so you're talking about $38 to have um, APHIS uh, sign your health certificate. There is gonna be a fee from your vet for completing uh, the health certificate. They will not only obviously complete that form, they're gonna need to do a health examination of the dog as well. You'll need to um, get the rabies uh, vaccine. You'll need to be microchipped and then Ultimately, you're going to need to invest in a dog crate. You're going to need to make sure that dog crate obviously has the appropriate labels. In this case, you'll need a little uh, sign that says uh, live animals with arrows pointing up in green. 
you will also need to get a water bowl attached to the uh, crate so that uh, handlers can also uh, water the dog as per need, as per need of uh, the animal. And then there's gonna be a fee for transporting the dog to uh, the UK. So my fee from IHG, or IAG, sorry, uh, was $1,900. Um, so obviously making this move was not cheap. Um, this dog potentially has been the most expensive purchase for an animal I've ever had in my life. Um, but uh, I wouldn't be without her. But so thanks for listening. Um, hopefully this provides you with the information that you need um, and you found this valuable. And uh, please like and subscribe.